really glad that you made it. I know you had, uh, you flew in all the way from where? Where'd you come from? Oh, I don't want to say the city because I had a, 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 a ticket attendant, a ticket person, an agent who was uh, unkind to me. And so I don't want to just specifically locate her in the country. But, <laughs> but, uh -huh. I, but I've been on a book tour, see, for uh, about three, four weeks, a long time. And these book tours are worse than they, because they treat all, they, just like in Hollywood, you know, they treat a writer. They treat a writer in Hollywood like an unnecessary evil. And so all around the country, publishers, you know, they, they book writers. I'm not a writer, but mm -hmm. Jane wrote the book. And I was, because it's my character, we went on a book tour. And um, so they book you un unbelievably tight, you know? These I things mean, are a grind. We've had yeah, people on the show. Grind. And they yeah, just and you're just dead. You're just exhausted, more exhausted than I could. I could have done like 20 shows in a week, 20 physical two-hour shows. Anyway, so I get to the airport very early in the morning, and it's raining, and... Uh, and I'm really tired and I look bad, you know, and my hair, I mean, my, whatever bad haircut I had has grown into worse length. And, uh, <laughs> in the cab ride to the airport, yeah, this happened, and, right? Yeah, you know, and oh, just in grimy, you have grimy pores, everything's going wrong. <laughs> and so uh, I get, and when we get there, the, the computer is broken down, so we couldn't check in at the curb, you know. And we had to take two escalators, and then two escalators up, two escalators down. We had to take a tram to the mm -hmm. other end of the airport. And when we get there, they'd given away my first class seat. They just, they just tossed it away? I know, it's sad, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> the saddest story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, so and naturally, but I needed a first, I, I thought I needed a first class seat, but I didn't really, because mm -hmm. it turned out that, I mean, I never used to travel first class because I thought it was, uh, you know, um, oh, it was a slap in the face of my origins. Mm -hmm. So, uh, <laughs> but then, so, you, but then, then you tasted those warm nuts and you thought, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't care. That's right. so, <laughs> I'm staying here. So anyway, well, I wasn't paying for the ticket anyway, so they had booked me first class, but then they gave it away. So, but the woman at the desk, you know, I said, but we've been here for 20 minutes. How could you give my seat away? Because she said, next time you're just going to have to get here a little earlier. <laughs> uh -huh. And I said, but I'm so, please, I said, please, all I need is a kind word, a kind gesture. I'm, I'm, I'm desperate. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm aging. Uh -huh. Everything's going wrong with my life. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I said, if you and I said, oh, even if you don't mean it or believe it, at least pretend <laughs> that you care a little bit uh -huh. that you gave my seat away. And she says, I'm getting a little tired of you scolding me. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I love how you're looking for sympathy from a ticket person in I an thought, airline. Well, yeah. I thought I, I thought it would be. I thought we could probably have a kind of, you know. Uh, a psychological breakthrough on both sides. I tried not. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't use the word crunk even once. Oh, good for you. Good for you. I really held my. I remained uh, composed and ladylike. And um, anyway, I said I'm not gonna. They said it's not ending here. I have to get on the plane. I have to s take this coach seat. But when I, I'm not stopping, I'm telling it all the way here, all the way up the runway, the gangplank, <laughs> or whatever you call it. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that takes you to coach, yeah. and I'm and I'm going to tell all my fellow passengers. I'm going to tell all your colleagues who are in the flight in the flight mm. attendant pool, and of course by this time, <laughs> all the the news had traveled, of uh -huh. course, to the airplane. So everybody was looking at me when I got on, and um, and all the flight attendants came over and sort of huddled and you know caressed me and. <laughs> and wow. Yeah, really, that well, works. Well, they were teasing I'm me. I'm going to try you know? this. Oh. <laughs> no, they were teasing me, but. They, they wanted me to feel better, and they said, oh, you've had a hard day, and they held me to their bosoms and things. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. I, I had more fun in coach, actually. I didn't know, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of hugging in coach. Yeah. We, we did a bit uh, before the show, the, before you came out, the crystal ball, which touched on elections a bit, yeah. uh, which brought something to mind. You're very, I know you're very politically active. Do you have a take on, uh, on the elections right well, now? Well, the, you know, the thing that, when I was watching that, uh, the thing that occurred to me that, made me happiest was that stars don't have to be elected every four years. <laughs> you know, I thought, I thought, what if politicians had to become, they got to be politicians the way we get to be stars, uh -huh. all of us. <laughs> oh, thanks for, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks for including us. <laughs> Very and generous then, of you. And then you. politicians would have to endorse us, <laughs> and then we would have to probably make commercials telling the country what kind of entertainment we were going to give them. <laughs> A promises we would not want to make. <laughs> no, and then I wonder what. I, anyway, I'm just glad I don't have to be elected every four years. No, this is a nice. This is a much better way to do it. Well, let's make sure we get to the book, uh, Edith Ann. It's uh, called Edith Ann: My Life So Far. This is as told to Jane Wagner, as uh, as you mentioned. Um, what would you say the book is about? Well, the book <laughs> the book is about me, Coded. <laughs>
Yeah, I said, I have this, I have this hair. My publisher said, go out with your hair just like Edith. And then people will see that you are Edith. <laughs> yeah, so the book is about me, and I am six. Uh-huh. Oh, six. And the thing I had most I wanted was that I wanted my teenage sister, Irene, mm -hmm. to be like all the other teenagers in Edgetown and just run away. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got my wish. My wish came true. And as bad as I felt when she was at the house, I felt worse when she was gone. And that I am hoping she will come back. <laughs> and so I, I like to write letters. I wrote lots of letters to people to help people. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who would you write to? Well, when me and Bob watch the talk shows on the daytime, <laughs> on Sally's show, on Maury's show, <laughs> on Oprah's show, on Montel's show, on everybody's show, on Ricky Lake's show, they have helped every family, almost every family in the, in the U.S. except the Bewley family, <laughs> which is our family. Uh-huh. Everyone, they've just missed you. Yeah, but I keep writing because someday soon it will be our family's turn. <laughs> and they will help us. And they maybe, like I wrote to Richard Simmons about my, my friend hubby Matthews because he is overweight. <laughs> well, Richard will help him, yeah. Yes, because I thought maybe Richard could go to hubby's house and go through the refrigerator the way I have seen him go through it on Sally's, and I think on Maury's, too. <laughs> and then he could, put, he could put Hubby on a diet. And, and I told Richard, I said, Dear Richard, you are an inspiration to all body types. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone everywhere. You also write uh, Rush Limbaugh in this book, I noticed. I did. I wrote to Rush because <laughs> my dad likes Rush. And do you like Rush? Oh, yeah. He's opposite us, but I, we all have to love him. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Yeah, so, so here's what I said to Ru I wanted Rush to send my dad something special, like maybe an old Snapple bottle with an autograph. <laughs> and so I said to Rush, I said, please write back, but let me say to you, Rush, that I am a, I am a tree hugger. And, yes, and, on your, and I do not like your animal rights bumper music. <laughs> Because on his animal rights update, he has Andy Williams is singing Born Free. And in the background, there, you could hear gunfire and you hear animals screaming. <laughs> That's just Russia's sense of humor. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. And so I said, I do not want you to change your mind. I would wish you would have a change of heart. And if I could introduce you to my dog, Hug, I bet I could, I bet I could win you over to animal rights. <laughs> or at least get you get you to use nicer bumper music. We, yeah, that's a, that's a very good idea for Rush. Or you could also get Richard Simmons to visit Rush. I think. <laughs> yeah, that might a, be nice. That's a good idea. Yes, and I will write them at once. <laughs> I will write and tell them to do that. Wow. Well, that's. Uh, I, I wanted to ask you uh, very very quickly. I know. Uh, we're just about out of time, but I, I wanted to mention uh, you've done so many monologues over uh, <laughs> o over the years. You've done yes, so many I different. Have. Yeah, you've done so many different characters. Do you get requests? People must come up to you all the time and ask you to do some of the different characters. Oh well, they. Um, I mean, if I'm at the cleaners, you know, the phone rings. They'll say, Ernestine, it's for you. <laughs> and um, but um, oh, I, you know, I, I, there's no way I can tell you. I, I've tried to do every culture type there is. I. I the very first monologue I ever did on television, I think, was um, the woman who's addicted to eating rubber objects. <laughs> and, uh, and she's Lucy O'W. And she's making a, a confession, you know, about, uh, about this addiction she has. And, uh, and as she's recounting what happens to her, she says, you know, uh, one day my husband, Walt, came home early. I was just finishing off a typewriter eraser. <laughs> He caught me with the brush sticking out of my mouth. <laughs> From then on, I went right on the heavy stuff. Things started to disappear around the house. You know, Conan. Oh, at, sure. At I... first, I was careful. You know, door stops. <laughs> backs off the shag rugs. <laughs> tip off mother's cane. <laughs> Sometimes I'd be playing canasta with the girls. I don't know what would come over me. I'd just jump up, run in the kitchen, and eat a spatula. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, no one can accuse you. <laughs> I like it better when they don't applaud. Oh, well. But I mean, I like it better when you act like you're
in your life. What if we were in our living room, you know, and your friends are there, and there's four or five friends, and everybody, if someone says something funny, they. Oh, good. That... Please, please, Lily, don't encourage my audience from applauding. <laughs> don't, don't okay. try and get them not to. Uh, the book, it's it's really a fun book, Edith Ann, My Life So Far, and uh, it's by uh, J as told to Jane Wagner. People can uh, get that just about anywhere. It was really nice having Thanks. you on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.